In the Seven Woods by William Butler Yeats Read for LibriVox.org by Casper Nijsen. I have heard the pigeons of the seven woods Make their faint thunder And the garden bees hum in the lime tree flowers And put away the unavailing outcries And the old bitterness that empty the heart I have forgot a while Tara uprooted And new commoners upon the throne And crying about the streets And hanging its paper flowers from post to post because it is alone of all things happy. I am contented, for I know that quiet wonders laughing and eating her wild heart among pigeons and bees, while that great archer, who but awaits his hour to shoot, still hangs a cloudy quiver over Paracna Lee. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Arrow by William Butler Yeats Read for LibriVox.org by Casper Nijsen. I thought of your beauty, and this arrow, Made out of a wild thought, is in my marrow. There's no man may look upon her, no man, As when newly grown to be a woman, Tall and noble, but with face and bosom Delicate in color as apple blossom. This beauty's kinder, yet for a reason I could weep, that the old is out of season. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Folly of Being Comforted by William Butler Yeats. Read for LibriVox.org by Casper Nijsen. One that is ever kind said yesterday, Your well beloved's hair hath threads of grey. And little shadows come about her eyes. Time can but make it easier to be wise, Though now it seems impossible, And so all that you need is patience. Heart cries, No, I have not a crumb of comfort, not a grain. Time can but make her beauty over again, Because of that great nobleness of hers, The fire that stirs about her when she stirs, Burns but more clearly. Oh, she had not these ways, when all the wild summer was in her gaze. Heart, oh heart, if she'd but turn her head, you'd know the folly of being comforted. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Old Memory by William Butler Yeats. Read for LibriVox.org by Casper Nijsen. Oh, thought... Fly to her when the end of day awakens an old memory, and say, Your strength, that is so lofty and fierce and kind, It might call up a new age, calling to mind the queens that were imagined long ago, Is but half yours. He needed in the dough through the long years of youth, And who would have thought it all, and more than it all, would come to naught, And that dear words meant nothing. But enough, for when we have blamed the wind, we can blame love. Or, if there needs be more, be nothing said that would be hard for children that have strayed. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Never Give All the Heart by William Butler Yeats. Read for LibriVox.org by Casper Nijsen. Never give all the heart, for love will hardly seem worth thinking of to passionate women if it seems certain, and they never dream that it fades out from kiss to kiss. For everything that's lovely is but a brief, dreamy, kind delight. Oh, never give the heart outright, for they, for all smooth lips can say, have given their hearts up to the play. And who could play it well enough if deaf and dumb and blind with love. He that made this knows all the cost, for he gave all his heart and lost. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Withering of the Boughs by William Butler Yeats Read for LibriVox.org by Casper Nijsen. I cried when the moon was murmuring to the birds, 
Let peewit call and curlew cry where they will. I long for your merry and tender and pitiful words, for the roads are unending, and there is no place to my mind. The honey-pale moon lay low on the sleepy hill, and I fell asleep upon lonely echti of streams. No boughs have withered because of the wintry wind. The boughs have withered because I have told them my dreams. I know of the leafy path that the witches take who come with their crowns of pearl and their spindles of wool and their secret smile out of the depth of the lake. I know where a dim moon drifts, where the Danian kind wind and unwind their dances when the light grows cool on the island lawns, their feet where the pale foam gleams. No boughs have withered because of the wintry wind. The boughs have withered because I have told them my dreams. I know of the sleepy country, where swans fly round coupled with golden chains, and sing as they fly. A king and a queen are wandering there, and the sound has made them so happy and hopeless, so deaf and so blind with wisdom. They wander till all the years have gone by. I know, and the curly went peewit on the echti of streams. No boughs have withered because of the wintry wind. The boughs have withered because I have told them my dreams. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Adam's Curse by William Butler Yeats. Read for LibriVox.org by Casper Nyssen. We sat together at one summer's end. That beautiful mild woman your close friend, and you and I, and talked of poetry. I said, a line will take us hours, maybe, yet if it does not seem a moment's thought, our stitching and unstitching has been naught. Better go down upon your marrow bones and scrub a kitchen pavement, or break stones like an old pauper in all kinds of weather. For to articulate sweet sounds together is to work harder than all these, and yet be thought an idler by the noisy set of bankers, schoolmasters, and clergymen, the martyrs call the world. And thereupon that beautiful mild woman, for whose sake there's many a one shall find out all heartache, on finding that her voice is sweet and low, replied, To be born woman is to know, although they do not talk of it at school, that we must labor to be beautiful. I said, it's certain there is no fine thing since Adam's fall, but needs much laboring. There have been lovers who thought love should be so much compounded of high courtesy, that they would sigh and quote with learned looks, precedents out of beautiful old books. Yet now it seems an idle trade enough. We sat grown quiet at the name of love. We saw the last embers of daylight die. And in the trembling blue-green of the sky a moon, worn as if it had been a shell, washed by time's waters as they rose and fell about the stars and broke in days and years. I had a thought for no one's but your ears, that you are beautiful, and that I strove to love you in the old high way of love, that it had all seemed happy, and yet we'd grown as weary-hearted, as that hollow moon. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Red Hanrahan's Song About Ireland by William Butler Yeats. Read for LibriVox.org by Caspar Nyssen. The old brown thorn trees break in too high over Cuman Strand under a bitter black wind that blows from the left hand. Our courage breaks like an old tree in a black wind and dies. But we have hidden in our hearts the flame out of the eyes of Kathleen, the daughter of Houlihan. The wind has bundled up the clouds high over Nachnurea, and thrown the thunder on the stones for all that Maeve can say. Angers that are like noisy clouds have set our hearts a beat. 
but we have all bent low and low and kissed the quiet feet of Kathleen, the daughter of Houlihan. The yellow pool has overflowed high upon Cluthna bare, for the wet winds are blowing out of the clinging air, like heavy flooded waters our bodies and our blood, but purer than a tall candle before the holy root is Kathleen, the daughter of Houlihan. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Old Men Admiring Themselves in the Water by William Butler Yeats Read for LibriVox.org by Kasper Nijsen. I heard the old, old men say Everything alters And one by one we drop away They had hands like claws and their knees were twisted like the old thorn trees by the waters. I heard the old, old man say, All oh, that is beautiful drifts away like the waters. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Under the Moon by William Butler Yeats. Read for LibriVox.org by Kasper Nijsen. I have no happiness in dreaming of Brysalind, nor Avalon the grass-green hollow, nor joyous isle, where one found Lancelot crazed and hit him for a while, nor Eulet, where Nyers had thrown a sail upon the wind, nor lands that seem too dim to be burdens on the heart, land under wave, or out of the moon's light and the sun's seven old sisters wind the threats of the long-lived ones. Land of the tower, where Angus has thrown the gates apart, and wood of wonders, where one kills an ox at the dawn, to find it when night falls, laid on a golden bier. Therein are many queens, like Branwen and Guinevere, and Niam and Laban and Fant, who could change to an otter or fawn, and the wood woman, whose lover was changed to a blue-eyed hawk, and whether I go in my dreams by woodland, or dun, or shore, or on the unpeopled waves with kings to pull at the oar, I hear the half-strings praise them, or hear their mournful talk, because of something told under the famished horn of the hunter's moon, that hung between the night and the day, to dream of women whose beauty was folded in dismay, even in an old story, is a burden not to be borne. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Ragged Wood by William Butler Yeats. Read for LibriVox.org by Kasper Nijsen. Oh, hurry, where by water among the trees the delicate stepping stag and his lady sigh when they have but looked upon their images. Would none had ever loved but you and I. Or have you heard that sliding silver shoot pale, silver proud queen woman of the sky, when the sun looked out of his golden hood? Oh, that none ever loved but you and I. Oh, hurry to the ragged wood, for there I will drive all those lovers out and cry, Oh, my share of the world, O oh, yellow hair. No one has ever loved but you and I. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Oh, do not love too long by William Butler Yeats. Read for LibriVox.org by Kasper Nijsen. Sweetheart, do not love too long. I loved long and long, and grew to be out of fashion like an old song. All through the years of our youth, neither could have known their own thought from the others. We were so much at one, but oh, in a minute she changed. Oh, do not love too long, or you will grow out of fashion like an old song. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Players Ask for a Blessing on the Psalteries and on Themselves by William Butler Yeats Read for LibriVox.org by Kasper Nijsen 
three voices together hurry to bless the hands that play the mouth that speak the notes and strings o masters of the glittering town o lay the shrilly trumpet down though drunken with the flags that sway over the ramparts and the towers and with the waving of your wings first voice may they linger by the way one gathers up his purple gown one leans and mutters by the wall he dreads the weight of mortal hours second voice oh no oh no they hurry down like plovers that have heard the call third voice o kinsmen of the three and one o kinsmen bless the hands that play the notes that waken shall live on when all this heavy history is done our hands our hands must ebb away three voices together the proud and careless notes live on but bless our hands that ebb away end of poem this recording is in the public domain. The Happy Townland by William Butler Yeats Read for LibriVox.org by Kasper Nijsen There's many a strong farmer Whose heart would break in two If he could see the townland That we are riding to. Boughs have their fruit and blossom At all times of the year. Rivers are running over with red beer and brown beer. An old man plays the bagpipes in a golden and silver wood. Queens, their eyes blue like the ice, are dancing in a crowd. The little fox, he murmured, oh, what of the world's bane? The sun was laughing sweetly, the moon plucked at my rain. But the little red fox murmured, Oh, do not pluck at his rein, he is riding to the townland that is the world's bane. When their hearts are so high that they would come to blows, they unhook their heavy swords from golden and silver bows. But all that are killed in battle awaken to life again. It is lucky that their story is not known among men, for oh, the strong farmers that would let the spade lie, their hearts would be like a cup that somebody had drunk dry. The little fox, he murmured, oh, what of the world's bane? The sun was laughing sweetly, the moon plucked at my rein, but the little red fox murmured, oh, do not pluck at his rein, he is riding to the townland that is the world's bane. Michael will unhook his trumpet from a bough overhead and blow a little noise when the supper has been spread. Gabriel will come from the water with a fish tail and talk of wonders that have happened on wet roads where men walk and lift up an old horn of hammered silver and drink till he has fallen asleep upon the starry brink. The little fox, he murmured, oh, what of the world's bane? The sun was laughing sweetly, the moon plucked at my rein, but the little red fox murmured, Oh, do not pluck at his rein, he is riding to the townland that is the world's bane. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.